This is my friend Sabrina, and she's going to tell you how you can camp in some of the most beautiful places in the country for free and get paid. That's right. <laughs> I wanted you guys to meet my friend Sabrina, who is actually my camp host at my BLM campground. And she's rad and she's going to tell us all about how she volunteers here to get her spot and what her life mission is. She loves to travel. I do. Tell us about your journey. How did you end up here in Moab as a camp host? So I've been camping here for years. I uh, love this place. It's probably my most favorite um, out of the city nature spot. Yeah. For sure. It's great. And I'm a Florida girl. So I knew I wanted to come out here two months of the year. I was like, okay, how am I going to make this happen? Um, so I had thought about contacting the Park Service or the BLM. Mm -hmm. And it was in the back of my mind. But then I was talking to a girlfriend and she was like, why don't you just call them? My friend does it all the time. It's like really easy and they always need people. And I was like, really? Okay. So I literally called the next day because it was a Sunday when we were hanging out. I called the next day. I called, I went on to volunteer.gov and I saw that they were looking for camp hosts and the National Park Service was looking for people in the visitor center. Wow. Well, I wanted to be outside for sure. So I contacted the BLM and I was like, hey, I saw you're looking for a camp host. And they were like, yes, and we need one more. And um, so I was like, well, it's so last minute because I was like, I want to come out in October. They were like, it's cool. Normally it's a minimum of two months, but on the rare occasion they will make an exception and allow you to stay for six weeks. Wow. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to put the link that she mentioned below for you guys. But I was always under the impression that to be a camp host, you know, it was a pay position and it was like six months. Right. I think it's very cool that you can go to a beautiful spot like this and volunteer right. for your spot. For do sure. I have that right? You do. So it is a two month usual minimum for the BLM. It's a volunteer position. You do get paid but it's called reimbursement. So oh. they pretty much reimburse you the week for, you know, gas, groceries, you know, beer money. Um, so you get paid a, you know, a smaller amount, but you still get paid every week. Oh, you do? I get paid the whole time I'm here, but usually they only pay you at the end of your service. Oh, I'm sorry. So even though it's volunteer.gov yes. that you go through, you are still getting paid. Yes. Right now, at least here, they pay $100 a week. Wow. So, like I said, normally they pay you at the end of your service, but I asked them if they could pay me twice, and they said sure. So they're super flexible, too. Super flexible. So you didn't super have to flexible. go through some vendor and do a big application process. You just called. No. I called, and then I had to do an, a quick... 10 minute application on volunteer.gov mm -hmm. it's their application and that was it and then I right. called them and that's all they needed and they yeah yeah they didn't even do a background check <laughs> you never know who your camp posts are <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you guys the first night I pulled up in here we're at the Big Bend campground which you know there's a, a fairly busy road right here but we're right on the Colorado River it is a choice spot so, of course, I get here, and um, there weren't a lot of spots, but I went over to the camp host here, and she was in a tent. And that was the first time I had ever seen a camp host, BLM, National Forest, anything in a tent. <laughs> and um, so I think that's pretty unusual. How are you finding that so far? It is super unusual. Now, I will say this. This is my first time working with a government agency, so I'm learning about all the... Um, tricks and trades and tribulations that they deal with and one of that is being understaffed. So when I talked to them on the phone they had in the application that they had no hookups for RVs, right? Right. So I was like, ooh, then I don't know if I can do it. I don't have an RV yet. And so I called them and they're like, oh, you can tent camp. You can tent camp. So I was like, okay, cool, so right? So they really did need some people. Totally. So... 
anyway, long story short, I've, I got here, I found out no one else is tent camping. And why? It's because the elements are crazy out here. The wind gusts are between 20, 25 miles an hour sometimes. There's not a lot of trees. Um, so yeah, most camp hosts do not tent camp for many you, reasons. You had been a tent camper before. Yes. So did you find that the gear that you had was good enough? Or what would you recommend if somebody was going to do this? Is there something you wish you had that you don't have? A van. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I brought everything I needed, you know, tarps, yeah. sleeping bags, sleeping pads, um, warm clothes. I pretty much have everything I need. Okay, cool. Uh, it's very unusual for camp posts, but I'm doing it. And oh my God, I am the star of the office. No one can believe I am tent camping and a woman by myself. What made you want to come out and take this job in your traveling journey and tell us about what you've done before this. She's fascinating, you guys, and where she wants to go after this. Okay, so this was me camp hosting, which is an excuse for me to come out here, really, for you know almost two months. Normally, in real life, outside of camping, I own my own business um, where I coach. I do life coaching, wellness coaching, um, I'm also a chef, medicinal organic chef, and I also use uh, divination tools such as numerology, astrology, um, cards, tarot, oracle, pendulums, etc. Smoke. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> um, so I own my own business. So that's why I was able to come out here for this long because I, I'm not a nine to fiver. I don't have a big corporate job on purpose. Mm -hmm. So. After this, um, I am taking a week to get back to Florida, Orlando, and from there, just I'm going to be researching and doing as much work as possible to see how I can be on the road more often. And Robin has been a huge inspiration already. I'm like, girl, I'm going to get in the van life, yeah. right? I don't want to have to pay rent, you right. know, when I don't need to. Right. So that's my, one of my goals is to become a van lifer, at least for part time, you know. Um, so yeah, travel's my number one passion. Yeah. So this is just kind of the start of it. Yeah. Um, you guys, I mean, she, she's camped in Europe. She was telling me she camped near <laughs> Paris or Versailles, which yeah. is amazing. One of the adventures that Sabrina's gone on that I really wanted to tell you guys about was that she did some backcountry camping with a, like an all-terrain vehicle. Yes. And I don't even, forgive me, because I don't even know what it's called. It just sounded great to me, so yeah, tell people about so that. Yeah, so there's the TAT, T-A-T, which is the Transatlantic Trail, I believe, and it goes from one coast to the other. So if you have an off-road vehicle or a motorcycle, you can actually take the trail and not drive on highways and wow. actually just be in nature the whole time and it's 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 a thing and it's I did part of it and you camped in a tent that whole time I did that's yeah. awesome camp for three weeks in mm -hmm. a tent uh, longest spout I've ever done um, using the bathroom out in the, the wide open the wide open by the way you guys Sabrina's mom is 73 and she's coming next week to tent camp with Sabrina <laughs> in her spot for the first time in her life isn't that great She's about to have the adventure of her freaking life. That's awesome. It's never too late. Never. Get never. out there and do stuff. Yeah. I was told that when I was coming out here, I wasn't going to make any deep, close friends. But I have. I have. I've made a couple great friends for life, for sure. Um, but everyone's, I feel, in a different mentality when they're traveling. Um, everyone's more friendly, open to chat open to meet new people yes open just more open-minded just yeah. in general so i have been completely impressed with the caliber of people and the hospitality yes you know you meet someone and then you know you're like come over for dinner right and it's just like your instant friends right instant family um so it's really touched my heart yeah being out here what would you say to people that dream about traveling but they never actually get out of their house and go do it was that a setup? 
<laughs> Let me go ahead and set Sabrina up there. You know, um, it all it takes is action. Everyone can have a dream. Everyone has a dream. Yes. But it, to, to do it, you need to actually um, research and take action because um, otherwise everything is just fantasy. Part of what I teach is that everyone can be free. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to live in a box. You know, you don't have to work at jobs you hate. You don't have to be in yes. relationships that you can't stand. Yes. That, so, yeah, this is this is what I teach to be free and, you know, to be alive and to feed your soul and your mind and your body and your heart. So, yeah. That's good. That's yeah. really good advice. Yeah. So, you guys, again, I'm going to link Sabrina's website and her YouTube channel before, below. Do check her out. Her stuff is great. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on the way out. It helps people discover this channel and this video. And I wish you all happy travels out there. And be free. Be free, people.